we are here in 2020. Perhaps it's the year that 2020 has been, but, but as we come to this morning to Christmas one, the last Sunday of the calendar year, I have to say that I'm looking forward to what I pray will be a better year ahead. Oh, I know that the 24 hour demarcations on the calendar are merely somewhat arbitrary conventions that, um, that time just keeps rolling on, but those 24 hour demarcation of days gathered roughly in 365 units to mark out our orbit around the sun, those demarcations are certainly sort of a helpful way for, for we humans to organize our lives, to package our memories and to anticipate the future. And it certainly doesn't take much reflection to realize that the year 2020 has been really like no other in recent memory. For some, it's been a year of great loss and unanticipated change. And for all of us without exception, it's been a year of unprecedented pandemic disruption. 2020. It's a year that was recently summarized in a powerful way for people of faith in a poem by Andrew Roycroft. I'd like you to listen to a recent recording of Andrew Roycroft's poem. He recorded it on the shores of Strongford Lock in Northern Ireland. Listen to how he shares this poem. Bethlehem, year zero. This year, none of the pieces are in place. No finishing touch, just the rush headlong to make the best of things. More make do than make believe. A clambering to retrieve family under one roof. To pluck some safety from the dragon's teeth to make a place for joy again, long looked for after labour pains. The grace to hold our griefs in one hand, and with the other, just hold on. This year has no precedent, just more numbers from the government, just more bitterness of argument, sick hearts retching on hope deferred, reading tight between the lines for a word that might flare across the firmament and speak deliverance. But this year we have made the best of things. Find shelter here against the odds. Adapted what has come to hand. Rested in the grander plan that underwrites this circumstance. Sees grace instead of blinded chance. And lays in this manger arc the best beside the worst. The light amidst the dark. The king among the filth. And Mary cradles at her breast the head of one who from obscurity will carry heaven's destiny through thorn to crime, dandles with her hand the heel that promised from eternity will crush king death into the ground. This year we have no normal, new or old, but a different day, a dawn, a moment long foretold, now here, this year. those last lines of Roy Croft's poem, this year we have no new normal, new or old, but a different day, a dawn, now here, this year. Indeed, 2020 has been quite a year, hasn't it? But the good news this year and every year is that it comes to the conclusion with the Christmas story. And the Christmas story's timeless and unwavering invitation to look forward in hope because of what happened so definitively in the coming of Christ. And so this morning, as we wrap up another year, even this year, 2020, against the backdrop of the glow of Christmas, 
let's simply savor a couple of highlights, a couple of highlights of the hope that we have in the coming of Christ, hope that we so yearn for and need to hear afresh this year. Our gospel passage in the Gospel of Luke gives us this cameo of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. Now the baby Jesus, just under six weeks old, in the temple alongside of two aged saints, Simeon was there. Simeon, this old man who had long yearned for the consolation of Israel, Simeon was drawn by the prompting of the Holy Spirit to show up at the temple at the same time as Mary and Joseph arrived with the baby Jesus. And Anna was there, a widow for many years after having lost her husband in just the seventh year of their marriage. And now for years, her heartache and yearning was only resolved in her cloistered commitment to worship in fasting and prayer at the temple day and night, the passage says. And now the stories of their lives, Anna and Simeon, Mary, Joseph, the baby Jesus, the stories of their lives coalesce in a way to encapsulate the yearnings and the longings of all human existence, not bound by differences of gender or age or life experience. And the highlight of their hope and our hope is that in this little baby, the deepest longings of our lives for the restoration of all that is broken and undone are now certain to be fulfilled. For old Simeon, the passage is that of, a, of the language in the passage is that of, of the personal fulfillment of one who's long looked forward to the promised one, the one who would to come. And when he sees Jesus, when he sees the baby Jesus, he takes him in his arms and says, now I can depart. Now I can depart in peace because my eyes have seen God's promise restoration for all people. For Anna, the language moves then beyond her own personal fulfillment. In her language, she begins to speak of the expansive inclusion of all, all people who were looking for the redemption of God's people. Dear friends, this biblical highlight in the gospel of our hope reminds us that the people of God, you and I, the people of God are those who dare to believe, who dare to hope in the face of present circumstances, whatever they might be, that in Christ, the newborn babe, the future, our future, is certain. And then one more highlight of our hope from the first reading in Isaiah. Isaiah proclaims to a people just freed from exile, the glorious good news of their deliverance in these words. He says, I will greatly rejoice. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. But in the very next verses in chapter 62, we see and learn that the full realization of that restoration had not yet happened. He goes on to write, I will not keep silent. I will not rest until vindication shines out like dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. And so Isaiah to these people realizes that it's not here fully yet. We still yearn and long and wait like aging Simeon and Anna, like us. The people then were still living in anticipation of the final day when all things would be set right, when all things would be restored to God's creative dream and vision for all creation. And so Isaiah cast his prophetic vision well into the future, a future that includes not only the future of the Old Testament people, but includes our future as well. And he promises that there is coming a day, he writes, when the nations shall see your vindication and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give you. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord 
and a royal diadem in the hand of your God, you shall no longer be called forsaken. And your land shall no longer be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you. Did you hear those words? For the Lord delights in you. Dear friends, in the face of 2020, on this last Sunday of the year, in the face of every heartache, every confusion, every failure, every disobedience, every brokenness, every sorrow, every tear, God has come definitively in Jesus to understand us. And in understanding us and our circumstances and our predicament, to embrace our pain and to hold us in it. This, this is our hope. Hear today the good news that the Lord delights in you and promises to restore every facet of the longings and yearnings of your life. Because Christ came, there's coming a day when, as the old chorus says, you shall no longer be called wounded, outcast, lonely or afraid, but your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one. I'm going to ask now that we just simply take a moment of quiet reflection to bask in God's love for us and our world in the midst of our present circumstances. I've asked that Teresa would sing for us a song that's, that's very new, just recently written and recorded, reflecting on this year. It's by Jessica Ray. And then to lead us in singing a prayer that proclaims the promise of God for our lives this year and every year. May it be so in our lives. Amen. <laughs> 